James, you were pretty confident from the start that the voice referendum would fail. How did you know? Uh, I just figured at the end of the day that uh, your regular Australian would not vote for unequal citizenship was where really what it boiled down to. I mean, there was that's the big moral problem. Uh, they they don't want to use the word race. Okay, based on characteristics you're born with, you're going to give special entitlements to a small chunk of the population that no one else gets. I mean, there are also political problems. This was going to tie up decision making in knots, especially if you're on the right side of politics. And the legal and constitutional problems were potentially enormous. But your average citizen just doesn't like the idea of this. I don't like the idea of it. And, you know, they did everything they could to game this referendum. They, they, it was the first one where the government didn't fund both sides, the first contested referendum, because they knew that the corporates, what did they give, almost $100 million? The no side limped along on $8 million. And it was a pretty crushing destruction you know, defeat for cosmopolitan inner city establishment types. They, the only places that voted for this were inner city, big city and Canberra constituencies. That's it. Yeah, well, Advance Australia played a pretty, uh, pretty yes. good game. Um, but I've got to say, you've got to give credit to where it's due, James. You played a pretty good one yourself too. You were a regular commentator and uh, obviously you hit the bullseye quite often during that campaign. Well, you throw enough balls at the wall, Fred. One of them's got to <laughs> one of them's got to pay off. Yeah. Albanese was told months ago that the referendum would almost certainly fail. Why did he persevere and loaded question, should he resign? I, you know, it's hard to know. I think partly they knew they had so much money that a few months ago they thought we can still turn this around. You know, they, they had, what, 10, 15 times more money than no. They probably waited too long. And it, it turned out that having Hollywood types and celebrity sports stars and the big end of town preach to people and tell them they're sort of moral cripples if they don't vote yes was counterproductive. I mean, in some ways, the best weapons the no side had were getting Noel Pearson up there and Marshall Langton and some of the big end of town, Alan Joyce, painting planes, yes. I mean, there was, it was so sanctimonious and condescending, and the pretense that it was just a modest little request, this was the m most major attempt to amend the Constitution. And at the end of the day, people figure out what is effectively prefer prevarication and misdirection. So they figured it out. Yeah, well, I've got to say, I mean, I'm pleased with the result, but there were times during this long campaign that I suspected that the Australian people might fall for all that Hollywood guff and uh, and the, the spin that was coming from the yes side. But, uh, you know, true to the Australian sort of culture and character, you know, the uh, that Australians don't like being told what to do and what to think. Now, Fred, I... I I am glad they showed that this time because after two and a half years of lockdown where I started to think they do like being told what to do and they do like being told what to think. But I think that's another factor. People realized that just about everything the government said during lockdown was wrong or debatable. And it's going to be a lot harder to do that to us again. And so that probably helped uh, the no side in the voice campaign as well. Yeah, like you, I've detected a bit of a turnaround since yeah. COVID. And I'd say, James, that this is the next best thing to a mandate for the opposition to start aggressively pursuing a conservative suite of policies, not just on Aboriginal welfare, but on energy, the economy, immigration and so on. Do you think the coalition will start shifting to the centre right? My God, I hope so. I mean, here's the lesson. When they first announced it, the polls were about 70% yes. The Scott Morrison approach would be have a few focus groups and then just cave in. It shows you that if you have values and beliefs and you explain them to the average voter, you, you can move the room. And they moved it to 60% no. And so this idea that we, we have to do this because that's what the focus groups are, we have to park ourselves a centimeter to the right of labor, it's a losing strategy. It has yet to work. It's destroyed the Liberal Party at the state level. So I understand that there are professional politicians on the right side of politics who have no values at all. I like, I like Peter Dutton, and it, he, he could win the next election. Personally, I would come out against all the net zero garbage. They're building a they're building a coal fired power plant every week in China. Forget India on top of that. So do that and cut back on the massive big scale immigration. I don't know how many viewers know, but uh, 
gross domestic product per capita, per person, we are effectively in recession. It's not going up. And they just throw around this, this measure of gross domestic product. Mass immigration makes gross domestic product go up by definition. That's, you know, GDP measures economic activity. If you have two people living in a city and then it goes up to 20, GDP goes way up. But individuals could be way worse off. And I think, you know, they're, they've just, they're basically lying to the population on the benefits of mass immigration. We gotta cut it way back. Just bring in people who bring in skills we need. And I'm speaking as a Canadian here, so people might think that's ironic. But, you know, at some, to some extent, you bring in the people that will benefit the country. And right now we're just, it's just, you know, the universities are basically running visa programs. People yeah, come that's so they right. can get a visa. It's, it's yeah. shocking. Yeah. Well, one of, the, one of the lessons from this referendum is that common sense cuts through to the electorate. I mean, who knew, James? <laughs> You have to actually tell them your point of view and why you're going to work for it. Yeah, and yeah. you have to fight for something. You have to believe in something. Now, I think Dutton is good, but I, I worry about his advisors. I worry about the 25-year-olds who are advising him. Fire them all. Bring in people who are, you know, over 40, who've seen a bit of the world, and who believe in something. 